Hi, I'm Mike Elliott, and you're watching CEO Roadshow. Today, we're joined by Mr. Daniel Legault. He's the CEO of Antib Therapeutics, a leader in developing safer therapeutics for pain and inflammation that trades under the ticker ATPPF. Good afternoon, Dan. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks very much, Mike. Great to be here. So, Dan, to start off, tell us about your background and a little bit about uh, what Antib Therapeutics does. Sure. Well, Antib first, we're a classic biotech with a drug platform of safer, not addictive drugs for pain and inflammation. We, we have three potential blockbusters in our pipeline. It's very, very exciting. We think that we have solved one of the classic longstanding problems in medicine, namely that these drugs, these anti-inflammatory painkillers, drugs like Advil and, and aspirin and Aleve that everyone has, they cause ulcers and bleeding in the stomach and the intestines. About 25% of people take them, a long-standing problem. We think we have solved that, and so that's, so it's very, very exciting. Um, you know, it, these drugs are, are actually the leading cause of, of hospital-related drug deaths in the United States. There's a study showing that there are more deaths from these drugs than there are from car accidents worldwide. I mean, it's just fascinating. It's a well-known, long-standing problem. And, but there are no good alternatives to these drugs and haven't been for years. That's why doctors turn to them for most pain, um, for most pain indications. And of course, you know, with the opioid problem uh, everywhere in the Western world and, and, and the developing world as, as well, uh, it's just a tremendous uh, problem that needs this solution. My own background, well, I, I'm a, I, I mean, I started out in the military, actually as a, I'm a pilot in the military um, uh, flew rescue uh, planes for eight years, and uh, I'm also trained as a corporate lawyer. But pretty quickly, I, I, I migrated into uh, turning around companies or helping grow um, super fast ones, ones that are growing like a freight train, but they, they need some clarity to their business model, or actually companies that don't yet have a business model or that model is in, in trouble. I, I tend to bring, um, you know, get, let's get the strategy very, very clear. Let's get the market understanding very clear and bring some technology and some analytics to it. Um, turns out that, that a lot of these backgrounds are, are, are ideal for, sort of for the fast-paced, very scientific and, and risky drug development business. Well, Dan, can you give us uh, an overview of your pipeline and leading drug candidates right now? Sure. Um, these are three um, potential blockbuster drugs in the pain and inflammation business. They all center around a fundamental discovery that my business partner, our, our, our chief science officer and our founder, um, that he discovered some, um, some 20 years ago and another discovery 30 years ago. He was really the first scientist to elucidate how the, all of these anti-inflammatory painkillers cause the ulcers and bleeding in the stomach and the intestines a huge discovery and he's gone on to become a, a very well recognized leader in the field. About 20 years later, um, he discovered that hydrogen sulfide, who would have thought that poisonous gas, but our bodies produce hydrogen sulfide as a signaling molecule. It's produced in pretty well every cell in our body and it is our main inflammation mediator or manager of inflammation and it plays a fundamental role in, in uh, as an anti-inflammatory and also in cellular uh, protection and cellular repair. So we are bringing that discovery to this problem. Our drugs release a small amount of hydrogen sulfide, very similar to the way the body produces it in each cell, and that provides the protection. It also allows us to lower the dose. So we finally think that we've solved this 50-year-old problem. It's been very, very difficult to solve. And what can you tell us about your long-term strategy to move towards monetization? Well, first of all, great development and great science. So, uh, so we are wrapping up at the moment our fourth and final phase two um, uh, study for our knee drug. This, this will be a total of 750 patients for a phase two, very, very large, but it is a huge problem. So we're trying to do very rigorous work. At the same time, we're advancing a lot of the science. We're doing metabolic work on anti-inflammatory painkillers using modern day technology, not only on our own drug, but in all the comparators out there that are on the marketplace. And so pushing that forward um, as well. 
we try to have capital markets at the at the forefront of our strategy. Uh, no, we all hate dilution, uh, just like um, our shareholders do. But of course, this business requires um, does require resources to keep that science and the development going, and also to put ourselves in a great um, partnering um, position. That that's uh, huge on our on, on our radar. We have already. Uh, licensed our drug for many countries, 54 countries in the secondary market, including um, important markets like, uh, like Canada, Russia, uh, and Israel, and Greece, for example. But we are um, readying ourselves for the very large markets of Western Europe and the United States uh, coming up. A couple of examples of this monetization preparation, in addition to the science and the development, of course, we are readying ourselves for a uh, for our end of phase two meeting with the FDA, a critical milestone and inflection point. We are we are just finished what is we think will be the premier health economics study on this huge problem, the damage caused by uh, these anti-inflammatory painkillers. That will be very important, and that will feed into what we think is will be a very sophisticated payer and key opinion leader study. Uh, for these large markets. We're doing that um, as well. All of these things, science, development, regulatory, and the business case, are essentially getting our ducks in a row for the larger partnering um, uh, activities that we think we will begin um, you know, just right, right in January. And uh, just shifting gears a little bit back to uh, funding, um, I wanna know, are you happy with the results of your recent financing? Yes, we are. Uh, that was uh, very, very smooth and very, very well received. So we're very, very pleased with, with that. Uh, even before the deal was closed, uh, our stock had risen quite, quite uh, nicely. It was oversubscribed in a matter of hours. So I, I think our shareholders were, were pleased as well. Uh, it gives us money in the bank. As I mentioned, uh, drug development requires resources. And so we're very judicious about it, but we do want to set ourselves up to be in a superb position for the partner. So that means continue the, the, the development, continue the science, tremendous amount of regulatory work going on for the very large markets, um, and getting our ducks in a row for the business case, uh, having absolutely world class business case studies as well. So that provides us the resources and the financing as well received. And can you give us uh, any background on the change in timing for your current phase 2B trial? Sure, we uh, put out guidance about three weeks ago, um, modestly delaying um, at the end of the trial from late Q3 into Q4. It, it's a relatively modest um, a modest delay. It's a very complex trial and we need um, the right patients into the trial. So they have to have um, be free of certain infections, for example, often very, very common infections that many people have. We are having a few more what we call screen failures or people not allowed into the study because they have one or more uh, issues. It, all it means is that we have to screen more people and it's taking a bit of, a bit more time and with the summer, we were getting fewer um, candidates coming forward, but it's a relatively easy fix and then play is relatively uh, modest. But data quality is absolutely crucial. This is a huge problem. We need, um, we need a major solution. 90% of Americans, for example, take these drugs. And so the, the regulators, the FDA, they want safer anti-inflammatory painkillers, but since so many people take them, they want rigorous work. And so we're just trying to keep the quality way, way up. Got it. Well, that's all the questions we had for today, Dan. Um, anything else you think investors should take note of right now? Well, it, it is a major year for us. Uh, we have several very uh, key inflection points. The largest, of course, is this trial, which will end in another uh, two or three months, um, a major inflection point, and the end of phase two going into phase three. Of course, that's um, uh, that's huge for us. Also, um, um, in, in the immediate horizon is our end of phase two meeting with the, with the FDA, which is generally speaking, another uh, major milestone. I think the market should look for other regional or secondary market activity as we prepare for uh, our dealing for the larger markets. We have our, our, our data room is, is quite active. And I might, um, I might have mentioned also that in contrast with so many of the deals in the past 10 years, we are not a niche drug with a super high price. There is a lot of controversy around that these days. You see farm executives testifying before con Congress 
most of the countries in the Western world are really pushing back against high drug prices. We're sort of the opposite, and many investors think that we're a good hedge. We are a drug for two billion people, um, uh, but uh, a low cost drug. Still plenty of money with a margin in the 90 percentile, of course, because our drug is not expensive to make, um, but we would be considered a low cost drug. And so that is very, very interesting. We're trying to make money for our shareholders, but do it in a, in a high volume way and solve this issue for people as well. Well, it's a great story. There's been a lot of, of uh, solid developments here in the last uh, few months. So 2019 has, is ending toward a strong close for Antibe Therapeutics uh, and the pharmaceutical industry in general. We're going to continue to follow the story closely, and uh, we'll hopefully have you on the show again soon for another update. Dan, thanks for being on the show. A pleasure, Mike. That would be, that would be great. Thank you. All right, everybody, you've been watching CEO Roadshow. Again, we were talking to Mr. Daniel Legault. He's the CEO of Antibe Therapeutics, a leader in developing safer therapeutics for pain and inflammation. The trades under the ticker ATBPF. You can learn more about them at AntibeThera.com. Thanks for watching CEO Roadshow.